Good morning. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to look. We're going to be talking about this idea of nutrition. Nutrition. It amazes me. We all think we know about nutrition, but when we look around in the United States, we have 65 percent of our population that are overweight. Overweight means that you have a body mass index that's greater than 28 percent fat. 28 percent fat. Normal weight is considered 25. When we start looking at, we do waist measurements on people, and if you're a woman, you should have a waist measurement under 36 inches to be considered healthy. If you're more than 36 inches, you're at risk. You're at risk for all kinds of health issues. For men, they get to be a little bit bigger than us ladies. <laughs> Their waist measurement should be less than 40 inches when we start looking at it. So you know, I walk around life, and I see thin people, and I see kind of plump people, and then I see really big people. Okay, and one of the things I find is while we think we know about nutrition, we're being bombarded by a lot of not healthy food. We're being bombarded by very busy lives that don't allow us maybe to be at home and cook meals like you might have remembered growing up. And so we're grabbing fast food or we're grabbing quick to make, and it's not the very very best choices for us. Okay. The reason we talk about this in parenting is because our kids watch what we do, and for most of us, we're responsible for feeding our children, right?、Mm -hmm. And so, if I have an overweight parent feeding a child, what do you think is going to happen to the child? They're going to they're going to end up with poor eating habits, poor eating choices, and they may progress to being overweight too. And I think that's what we're seeing as a society. I talk. I'm a, a nurse practitioner, so I work medical, and I'm thinking. Medical people have a better handle on nutrition. Watch my head. No, I'm talking to one of my doctors who's got a, who's got a little child. Now he'll walk in in the morning with a frappuccino, and a and a bagel with <coughs> cream cheese smeared all over it from Starbucks. <coughs> These are not good. He'll go to lunch and he goes and he gets fast food. Hmm. And I'm looking at this because he's talking about he's overweight, <laughs> and his doctor told him he's he's borderline diabetic and he's still eating like this. And、I'm, he says, "You know,、I'm, but my daughter will be okay." And I said, "Well, how is your daughter going to be okay if this is how you eat?" Well, because she'll know. No, she won't know because she's watching you, and what you eat is how she's going to learn to eat. And that's my point. We have to watch ourselves so that we know we're making good food choices, and if we're going to go to McDonald's or somewhere, we're doing it as an exception, not the rule. I believe in treats too. My kids like. You know, chicken nuggets and that kind of thing, but it needs to be the exception, not the rule. So, as we start looking at this idea of nutrition, we're going to also be looking at what digestion looks like, how we do things, some some of the labeling that goes on. I need you to start picking up your cans and your sodas and stuff, and looking at what you're eating, okay, and and thinking about the choices and thinking about what you're feeding your children, okay. So here we go. It's natural for kids to want to eat what they like. Okay, when you start feeding children, what are the things that they tend to like? McDonald's. McDonald's and candy, right? When my kids were little, they didn't particularly like、um, vegetables, baby food. You know, even then they would spit the carrots out. But if I got the peaches out, they were okay with peaches, right? But they didn't necessarily like the carrots, and they didn't necessarily like all the meat. But we have to continue to offer it and say you have to you have to eat some of this. When we talk about consequences in teaching children, you know you have to have a couple of bites of this before you can have that thing that you like. Okay, so it's natural. Please just be aware. Kids are naturally going to want the stuff that tastes better to them. It may be the sweeter stuff. It may be the stuff that's not necessarily so nutritional for them. But we as parents have to decide how much of that they can have and when it's going to be appropriate. You also need to be aware that you know our body, in terms of eating, is not our digestive tract is really not the most effective way this could have been done, but it's what we have. Okay, we can only process about 500 calories at a time. That's us as adults. Kids don't need 500 calorie meals. It's way too much for them. <clears throat> When we talk about adults and calorie intake per day, women maintain weight on about 1,500 calories a day. 
Men get a little bit more. Most men will maintain weight somewhere between 18 and 1,800 and 2,000 calories a day. Sorry, ladies, we just we have to eat a little bit less. Okay, so that would be if you're looking at okay, what should, how much should I be eating? That's the number of calories. The cool thing about our day and age are that we have these these uh, phones that have apps on them. I have downloaded on mine an exercise app that has a nutrition app with it. Woohoo! Nutrition app with it. So I can load in what I'm eating, <laughs> and it'll tell me how many calories I've had. And it'll tell me how, much, how many calories I've burned walking or running or doing whatever it is that I'm doing. Okay? So that's the cool thing about today. We have a lot more at our fingertips to be able to figure out what we're doing and if we're doing it okay. Kids need somewhere between, depending on their age, they usually need... 700 to 1,000 calories a day. And as they get bigger or are growing like teenagers, then you start having to give them a little bit more in terms of calories to help them grow. Okay? Our digestive tract, like I said, not the most effective way to do it. We have a stomach. It holds about this much food. So when you look at your plate, lots of us eat way more than this much food on our plate, don't we? <laughs> Big plates. Okay, so we have to look at our portions and that kind of stuff. We digest things in, a, in an order. We digest things in a specific order. So when you look at a meal, okay, your body is going to digest anything that is a simple sugar first. Okay, so for a lot of us, those are the carbohydrates. The simple car carbohydrates are things like rice and bread, especially the white stuff. Wheat's much better for you because it's a little bit harder for your body. It has to work a little bit harder for it. It has more nutrition in it. Anything that's bleached and white has been processed to death. Most of the nutritional value was processed out of it when we made it a white bread. Okay? And so we may be fortifying it back, but it's really not our best choice. Breads, though, break down pretty much to sugar, and the body quickly uses those. <coughs> Sodas are sugar. Juices are sugar. Okay? Now, it's not that you can't have them, but those are things that we have to be mentally thinking. How much of this am I eating? Because that's what your body's going to digest first. The easiest thing. That's how it works. Just like us sometimes. I'm going to do what's easy first. Okay? The next thing that it's going to digest is the fat. So again, lots of the, lots of the carbohydrates also have fat content. Or, you know, if you put a little mayonnaise on something with your dinner. If you're eating a sandwich and you put some mayonnaise on it, well, that's going next. Cheese has a lot of fat in it. Body's going to start digesting the cheese. Okay? Going to get to the more complex carbohydrates after that, which is going to be the wheats and the heavier grains. Third in the row. We haven't even gotten to the meat yet, right? Meat is the last thing your body's going to get to. It takes your body twice as much energy to digest chicken as it does to digest a piece of bread. So it's going to go to all the quick stuff first, and it's going to go to the heavier stuff last. Okay, so if you have, if you go to um, Burger King and you get a Whopper meal, I was just there this week, I'll tell you, I was bad, I had a Whopper meal. I was just dying for a Whopper. The meal, they have it on their placard now, is 1,200 calories, so I obviously didn't need all that, right? The sandwich is like 600, okay, and the meat is the last thing that we're going to get to. When you eat more than your 500 calories, your body doesn't even get to the meat doesn't even really get to the protein so you know you're just giving that away for free giving that away for free the other thing that happens when you overeat is your body is either going to dispose of the extra we all know what that is or it's going to put the extra in storage but it's going to do that with a lot of those carbohydrates that we didn't need and that's where we get bigger it's going to save it for later it's going to say <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Yeah, it's going to save it for later. <laughs> and then we keep feeding it and it keeps saving it for later. And over time, what happens? We're getting, we're getting heavier and heavier because our body's doing a good job of saving it for later. Right? Okay, so that's how it works. Vegetables are a form of fiber. They also have a lot of the vitamins and minerals that we need in them. And they get, they get picked up in that complex carbohydrate, so that's the third step. The third thing the body's going to go to is going to get to some of those vegetables. Not first. Okay. So we need to be, we, we now talk about diet and we now talk about nutrition. And some of you are older like me and you came through school and you had that pyramid, the food pyramid, 4432, they had those cute little songs. Well, that's been scrapped. 
because apparently we didn't understand it, or as our food choices changed, we weren't following it. And so now we have a food plate. We put a plate out there, just like we eat off of, and they're talking about how we need to put food on our plate. So if you think about a circle plate, you're going to divide your plate in half. <laughs> half your plate should be fruit and vegetable. Every time you eat, half of what goes on your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Okay, the other half of the plate gets divided in half again. So you have a plate with three parts to it. Okay? One quarter of your plate needs to be protein, which is going to be your meat or your beans. Beans is a protein, did you know that? And then the other one is going to be those carbohydrates, potatoes, rice. That's how a plate should look. Half fruits and vegetables, a quarter meat, and a quarter carbohydrates, which is grains. Okay? I don't, have any, I don't have any fluids on there yet, do I? It's because the cup sits out here. <laughs> the cup sits out here. And for kids, that should be milk. It should be juice. Okay. What do you think is an appropriate amount of, ju of uh, juice for a child? How many ounces do you think? Eight, Eight six, six. Four to six. Four to six is a serving. Even for you and I, four to six is a serving. Okay, so something to think about because I have great, I have 32 ounce glasses at my house. They don't need all that. So I'll, and you know what? I got to buy smaller ones because they don't feel like they're getting enough when the glass is only this full and it's this big a glass. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting rid of these. We can use these for water or something because they feel cheated. Well, I don't have a whole glass. That's like, you know, six servings of milk. You don't need a whole glass of that milk. So we have, these are the things we have to think about. You know, what's the perception? That the, the glass is empty and I'm not getting enough. Okay, now we've got to get to appropriate size glasses. All right, so that's how we should be eating. We as adults need 1,500 calories if we're women. Men need about 2,000 calories. Okay? Children need 700 to 1,000 depending upon their age. Infants need less than that. That's because we're giving them formula and other stuff. Everybody needs fruits and vegetables. Okay? When we talk about the fruits and vegetable thing, you ready for the number of servings? Remember that old pyramid, 4432? We're now recommending four to five servings of vegetables a day for people, you and me, and four to five servings of fruit a day. That's a lot more than we were telling people before. Okay? Three to four servings of grains two to three servings of protein. Okay. So the way we're feeding hasn't changed. We always talked about three square meals a day. Remember that one? We still need to be eating three meals a day. Breakfast is important because we're up and moving, and that's where we, we've always, medicine, we've always looked at people in nutrition and said, your, your breakfast is your most important meal of the day. And that's because for breakfast, for most of us, it's when our day starts and we know we're going to be using our energy and moving and active. And so you want to start with the calorie load because you're burning it. Lunch should be a medium portion meal of the day. Dinner can be medium or, for, like for me, lighter because I don't tend to do as much in the evening after my dinner. And we should not, we as adults, should not go to bed on a full stomach. Way too much time with all that food. <laughs> It's going to save it for later. You don't need that, right? I don't need that either. So three square meals a day. Children need snacks because they, are, they have higher metabolisms. If we're careful about feeding them appropriately, they're going to need little introductions of energy throughout their day. So they need a breakfast, and they may need a mid-morning snack, especially if they're with us. Okay? Sometimes some schools are offering a, a snack time or a break. So like sometimes my kids will say, oh, I'll get snacks tomorrow, and we send them with snacks, crackers or a little yogurt cup or something like that. They need an after-school snack if they're not eating dinner immediately after school. Okay, my kids get off at 3. We, we're not eating dinner at 3. We eat dinner about 6. So they need a little snack after school. A snack should be about 100 calories, about 100 calories, which is like a piece of fruit. It's a little bit of carrots or a vegetable. It can be some crackers or something like that, but you need to be aware of how much you're giving them. Am I close to 100 calories, or am I just doling it out in a container without any idea about portion sizes? Portion sizes, okay? So, and then dinner. Lots of times kid needs, kids need a little bedtime snack, too. My kids enjoy that. Glass of milk, I find, helps them sleep better. Let's talk about milk a little bit. Who in this life needs whole milk? Do you have any idea? 
babies, oh, right. No. Once babies hit one, they no longer need whole milk. Okay, we eat too much fat. Brains are developing. Once they're one, they don't need, is it one or two? Two. Two years old, I'm wrong there. Two years old. Babies are no longer considered babies and do not require that kind of fat content anymore. Okay, so once they're two, we should be cutting down on the fat. Two percent, we really recommend the skim, which is the one percent, <laughs> or, that, or that really thin stuff, because it has less fat. We don't need all of that. The calories drop, too, as you get the, as you get the fat out of it. Yes, sir. So we, when do you start to get a baby on a whole girl? A baby, a child? At one. At one. At one. So one or two. Children don't, don't take milk until one. Do you know why that is? Formula until one. You know why? Because we, it, when we have found that if we introduce cow's milk or milk products to children before one, we increase their, their risk of allergies. So we put that off and stick with a formula-based product until they're one to minimize them, them getting allergies. Good question. All right, let's talk about portion sizes. I give you, rule, I give you rules of thumb. I, I had to go looking around because I, I get rusty at this too. Let's think about fruit, okay? I advocate eating fruit over drinking a lot of juice, and here's why. Because when you drink juice, you can drink a lot more juice than you could eat the equivalent amount of fruit, okay? You could drink a quart of orange juice, no problem. Suck it right down. You could not eat eight oranges. You'd get sick, your belly would hurt, but you could eat. Eight, you could, eat, you could tr take a quart of juice, which is eight oranges. Way too much sugar. And that's where we get ourselves into trouble. That's why you need to know it's four to six ounces of a juice or a piece of fruit. A piece of fruit is considered a serving. So if you think about how big an apple is, usually it'll fit in your hand, right? An orange, <laughs> usually it'll fit in your hand. A half a grapefruit is considered a serving. Grapefruits are bigger. Okay? When you start looking at melon, now you're looking at quartering or eighthing, aren't you? Because it's much more bigger by volume. So if you keep in mind what an apple looks like in your hand, that's a serving size for a piece of fruit. Okay, when you're talking about strawberries, how many strawberries can you fit in your hand? Six, eight, depends how big they are, doesn't it? But they should fit in your hand just like that. So it's an easy way for you to say, how much have I got here, rather than getting a scale and weighing things. And I'm not going to do that, it's too intense for me, but if I have an idea what it looks like, what it should look like in my hand, I can do this. Okay. Vegetables are a little bit different. Okay, they also kind of fit in the hand, but they tend to be bigger, bigger pieces, so it's harder to put them in your hand, but it's that same kind of volume. A cup of fresh vegetables, which is actually not that big, it's about the same size as an apple, is a serving uncooked. Okay? When you cook vegetables, we lose a lot of the water, so we're concentrating them. Now you're looking at a half a cup, half the amount. So when you look at putting food on your plate that's cooked, you're looking at about two to three tablespoons of a vegetable is a serving size. Children may not eat that much. So a tablespoon, you know, a spoonful, you need to try a spoonful, is a, is a portion size. Grains, boy I love grain, I love rice, I love pasta. <laughs> it's one of my favorite foods. You know, and I can eat a lot of it because it makes me feel satisfied and full when I'm done. But for me to eat a lot of it, I mean, four and five servings. <laughs> Huge. A serving of rice is a half a cup. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? You go to, into any Italian restaurant and order a plate of spaghetti, you got four cups of pasta on there, which is eight servings of pasta. Way too much. You can go to the Italian restaurant. Just know you're taking half of it home. <laughs> Put it in a box because they give you a lot. What is your body going to do with that amount of pasta if you eat it all? Store it. Store it. Save it for later. <laughs> That's right. We don't need all that. So when we go to prepare our plate, that quarter of a plate, it'll only really fit about a half a cup, maybe a cup, which is an appropriate portion size. It's an appropriate portion size. Okay, pasta. Pasta is a half a cup, too, for a portion size. So it's not that you can't have more, just be aware of how much of this that you're eating. We as adults don't need that much. Kids can't eat that much. Okay? Your eight-year-old shouldn't be getting two cups, of, two cups of pasta. Way too much. What are we going to do? Save it for later. Then I have an eight-year-old that weighs 97 pounds. 
because they've got a lot of stored up pasta around their belly, right? So those are the things we have to be aware of. How, what does fruit look like? What does a portion look like? How much am I doing? You know, I too <coughs> find that I want to overfeed my kids. Sometimes I look at them and I'm thinking that they're an adult and I'll put too much macaroni and cheese on the plate because I'm not paying attention. They only need a half a cup. They get a half a cup, they need some vegetable, they need some meat before they get seconds. Because you know, my kids like macaroni and cheese. They would eat all of that, no vegetables and no meat because they love it. No, we can't do that. We're not getting enough nutrition in that, in that amount. All right. She was teasing me earlier because I, I brought a soda into the room. <laughs> I did this on purpose because <clears throat> this is one of those things out there. Once your children get a hold of regular sodas, boy, that tastes awful good. <laughs> it tastes awfully good. When you, go to the, when you go to the fast food places and you get it out of the soda machine, the fountain drink, it's even higher in sugar and caffeine than this because it's mixed right there. This can, this is a regular Mountain Dew, not diet. This can is one serving. 12 ounces is a serving. And this can is 170 calories. Okay, now this goes toward that total that we talked about. So of your 1,500 calories, lady, this is 170 of that for the day. Okay, now let's see what kind of nutritional, what kind of nutritional stuff we've got here. It's got no protein in it. <laughs> it's got 46, 46 grams of sugar. Okay, a packet of sugar, a packet of sugar, you've seen those, right, is 6 grams. A packet is 6. This has 46 grams of sugar. How many packets is that? 46 divided by 6 is seven. Yeah, 42. Four, it's 7 plus packets of sugar in this can of soda. I'm looking at the pace. It's going, oh my God, I would never put that much sugar. If you're drinking this, you are. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine feeding all that sugar to your child? Is it any wonder when you give this to a child that they're pinging off the wall? No. Absolutely not. You just like, woohoo. Gave them a whole bolus here. And what is your body going to digest first? Right here. So it's hitting your bloodstream. It's hitting their bloodstream. And wow, now they're pinging off the walls. They're acting all hyper. And right here is the reason that they're doing that. <coughs> Let's see. We've got some salt in here. It doesn't have any fat. 46 grams of carbs. And it's all sugar. Raw energy right here. Okay. How much of this should you give your kids? None. <laughs> that would be the correct answer. <laughs> how much do you think you how much do you think is okay? A sip. Cup. No. Half. Half a hand. At what age? I got no. one number. Teenager. I'm guilty. I can't even answer that question. I know. <laughs> and you know what? My kids have gotten a hold of this. And so they feel deprived if they can't have a soda because guess what? They like it. Yeah. So it should be a it should be a treat, right? Go back to your list of things you can reward your children with, and you can put on there, you know, half a can of soda, if that's what you want to do. Should it be a daily event? No. What about diet? It's worse. Now we have artificial flavorings. We're getting some research, but do we really know what's going to happen long term? <coughs> so that's not a real good idea either. So these are not, these are not good options. Okay, how about juice? Four to six ounces. If I give my child 12 ounces of juice, again, it's pure sugar. We put that in our minds though that it's okay because it's juice, it's natural, it's fruit. We have to be careful about volume because a glass of orange juice or apple juice is all sugar too. Okay, so you have to be aware of these things for yourself and your kids. Seven packs of sugar right here. Sugar has no vitamins and minerals in it. And that's what this can reflected. There's nothing in it but sugar. So we don't diet children. Did you know that? We do not diet children. We grow children into their weight if they're overweight. We grow them into their weight if they're overweight. Okay? A child, think about how children grow. You and I don't grow that much anymore, right? Because we're full grown. We're not growing bone anymore. We're not growing stature anymore. We're adults. We are, we are full grown. Children, when they're born, weigh somewhere between 
6 and 10 pounds at birth. And by the time they're 1, they're roughly 3 times what they were at birth. So if they're a 6 pound baby, by the time they're 1, they're somewhere between 18 and 20 pounds usually. That's a lot of weight to put on in a year. It is. Kids that are school age tend to weigh 50, 60, 70 pounds, right? Fifth grade, sixth grade is when a lot of kids will break 100 because they're about 12 or 13. Sometimes it takes them a little longer depending upon how big their parents are. Okay, those would be appropriate weight gains when we, look at, when we look at birth charts for children. So what happens when you have a 10-year-old that weighs 160 pounds? That child is overweight. And what are we going to do? We don't diet children. What about um, exercise? Yeah, now there's a piece that can come into play. Change the way they eat. So now I've got to look at their plate, right? And I've got to get them on an appropriate amount of calories. And they're going to feel hungry. And they're not going to be very happy because they're not used to eating this way. But we've got to, we've got to clean it up. If I'm eating poorly too, I've got to clean it up. Everybody's got to clean it up. <laughs> so we get them on an appropriate amount. Nobody is going to stay on smaller amounts if they're always hungry. I'm not going to, you're not going to, your kid isn't going to. How, so how do you fill that belly up with an appropriate amount of food when I'm used to too much food? Any ideas? Water. Yeah, what do you do with the water? Yeah, here's one of the tricks. You ready? When you need to get down to an appropriate size and food, portion size, and you don't want to be hungry, you start your meal with six ounces of something to drink. Water, which has no calories. Why? Your brain is behind your belly. So your belly will send a signal to your brain that it's full, but it's going to do that and the brain isn't going to get it right away. That's when you get done with your plate and you still have room for a little more, and so you eat a little more, and you eat a little more, and five minutes later you're like stuffed. And you're, you're uncomfortable, you're stuffed. Your brain didn't quite get the signal that you were full at the right time. When you start your meal with something to drink, it can be even soup. If you start your meal with a soup, that's fluid. It starts stretching that tummy and the brain is already starting to send signals that we need to digest and I'm getting full. So that your brain will turn off and feel happy and full when you've had an appropriate amount of food. Okay? If you look at your plate, when I have people start looking at how they're eating, I have them put together their plate like they do. I'm going to ask you to do that half thing. Half fruits and vegetables, carbs and meat. Okay. If you're eating too much though, you know you put that pasta on there, you've got it piled up, it's coming over the sides. <laughs> you're going to have to take a little off. Because the other thing that has to happen is you cut back calories a little at a time. So if you find you're eating 3,000 calories a day and you only need to, we've got a long way to go to get to where we need to be, don't we? If you drop a thousand calories all at once, you're going to be starving. You'll be starving the whole day. You'll be thinking nonstop about food and how you're always hungry. And <laughs> you're not miserable. I'm making you talking about it. You're not going to live it either. You cut back a little bit at a time. Your body ain't going to miss a half a spoon of <coughs> rice. It's not going to miss that. Okay? It's not going to miss taking a little clump of that pasta off the plate. Especially if I start with water. So we have to cut back to normal, normal proportions. One thing I do want you to know is your children get this. If you start paying attention to what you're eating, the calories and the portion sizes, your children will pick it up and they will understand. And they will, they will begin to make good choices for themselves. I was working with a, young, I was working with a dad and his, his son and the son had identified that he was a little bit overweight. He went into play football basketball or something and he was he they were looking at him like you're a little too heavy you got to lose weight to do this you know there are caps on football yeah he had to lose like 10 pounds to be able to play football that's what it was so he was he wasn't sure how he was going to do that he was talking to his dad they were they I knew them and they're like well how do we do this Carrie and so we were talking about portions and the, the son began to really pay attention to the portions that he was eating and could tell dad, you know, I'm only going to eat half of this and I'm going to have a little bit more of this over here and, I got, and I'm having more, f I need, we need to go to the store to get some vegetables. I'd like to have salad. You know, I have a 10-year-old telling dad what he thinks he needs to do. Kids go to the cupboard and they will make better choices for snacks when we're showing them how to do it.
Is it, is it difficult getting them there? If we're not eating well, it is. Because they're used to having the cookies or they're used to having a, a large amount of something and they don't understand initially what's going on and why they have to, they have to eat appropriately. When you take sodas out of their diet, they're not going to understand why initially. Okay? When they can't have ice cream every day, they're not going to understand why. Go look at your ice cream package. A lot of sugar. <laughs> it has, it has some, cause some calcium in it. And it does have some good stuff in it, but it's a lot of sugar. And it's not going to be the best thing to, to give them all the time. So those are the basic things that I want you to take away about nutrition for yourself and for your kids. Okay, one of the things we haven't spent a lot of time on is exercise, which does fold into being healthy. Kids need to move. Okay, they're not going to exercise like you and I, but they need to move. Bicycles, scooters, time playing in the park or moving. Okay, a way to get them out from in front of the TV. Okay, so that's going to end this segment on nutrition.